my god, man! I'm so excited! What the hell is that? Would that oh. be a good costume? Oh, look, Joe, see, I'm not gonna get burned this year, alright? Yeah, it was fucking around last year, spent $120 in the most expensive edition, so I had to make some cutbacks. I, I could clearly see that. I, I just went with a standard edition. What the fuck is this, Joe? Oh. Heroes, fight. Joe! I, I know you're gonna be mad, but I got the pre-order. But check out all the cool shit I got, man. Look at this. You bought the fucking Whoa. digital deluxe edition, Joe? You yes. piece of shit. What the fuck? I thought they said it wasn't pay to win. What do I get? It's clearly not pay to win. Okay, what, then what weapon do I get started off with? Oh, you got the standard, right? Yeah. Oh. Hold on. Let me put this stuff down. All right. Chip. This what is yours, I believe. What the f That's the standard edition! What the fuck am I supposed to do with this?! You get what you pay for. Uh, <laughs> well... What the f <laughs> I'll see you on the battlefield! <laughs> fuck you, Joe! I don't need your pay to win garbage! I'll beat your ass! You fucked it up! Again! Oh my god, I can't believe. Here we are, once again, Battlefront 2. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! I hate you! And instead of talking about improved gameplay, a new added campaign mode, revised multiplayer offerings and classes, and, and starship battles, we're instead talking about how f***ing greedy and stupid EA is. Screwing around with Star Wars to squeeze as much money out of their consumers as with ridiculous microtransactions as possible. Bec what? It blows my mind, Joe! It blows my mind! You're fucking whales over, and you're fucking the normal players over because you even have this system in the first place! You fu You see what I'm saying? You're fucking them both ways! There's nothing here that makes you feel special. <laughs> no. It's literally it. garbage! It's trash! Every fucking pool is trash! So what's the point?! EA was supposed to have turned a new leaf! No more season passes, no more stupidly expensive $120 additions. They seem to show actual restraint this time and signs of change in all their initial marketing. But then it became apparent all they did was replace all that shit with an even more sinister version. Loot boxes. And worse, they expected everyone to applaud them for it. I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. You will try. <laughs> <laughs> But not this time. The AAA Star Wars community is not one to be fucked with. They pushed back, and surprisingly, EA Dice reacted immediately by making some changes from the beta. 
because if they hadn't, it would have been a colossal disaster at those particular numbers. But it still is a colossal disaster. But at the time, they said they had tweaked things and put in some restrictions that would help prevent those sort of pay-to-win concerns. However, we started to realize that nothing significant had really changed overall. Hey, it's no longer pay to win, guys. Only if you looked at the digital deluxe edition, anyone can clearly see the game is still just that. By paying in 20 more dollars here, you get a significant advantage in digital goods that are already in the game. This was the Han Solo blaster situation on steroids. Ooh, you get Han Solo's blaster. Instant access. Oh, sh Instant access to Han Solo's blaster. Not just one gun, but a ton, like four free guns, four epic star card abilities, stuff for heroes and more. Things that would take the $60 player hundreds of hours eventually to unlock, at the very least. So this is the officer crate that you get. There's the epic right there, Joe. And we get reduced recoil and an actual gun unlock. So the criticisms, if anybody makes a YouTube video that still says it's still pay to win, they're not lying. They're not lying. Worse still, upon EA's early access release, which ended up working against them for once, a Redditor did the math and it was going to take a dedicated 40 hours just to play with Darth Vader in the Star Wars game. That's 40 hours of not opening crates or doing anything else, but just grinding to play as everyone's favorite Star Wars villain. What the fuck? But things have developed that'll ensure security. I've just made a deal that'll keep the Empire out of here forever. We would be honored you would join us. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. And EA responded with, oh, oh, this is done to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment. So, you can either play for months, or cough up some money to bypass this sense of pride and accomplishment. What?! And thus started the domino effect with the community continuing to hammer away at EA's hypocrisy. this, their stock started to decline. They, they did a public AMA on Reddit, uh, but Perception was still following, so they changed the hero prices and, and reduced it 60 to 70 percent, uh, but the damage had already been done. Soon everybody was talking about EA's loot boxes in Star Wars across the internet. This form of loot boxes and progressions was still there, and some even calculated that if you wanted to unlock everything, it could take anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 hours, or just $2,100 to unlock it all. What the actual fuck? <laughs> a 
an exact one-for-one -one mobile game economy from a free-to-play, pay-to-win game inside a full retail to $60 to $80 triple-A game. It can't be true, we all thought. That's impossible. Search your feelings, you know it to be true. All this bad press ultimately got Disney's attention, and it's reported that Disney executives put the hammer down on EA, concerned about public perception, especially with The Last Jedi film right around the corner. In response, EA decided to finally remove all paid loot boxes from the game. This decision is only temporary. Likely only just to turn them on again after all of this is blown over. Just unwilling or unable by this time to completely remove this system that they put out in the game and that's so integrally linked to progression. And that's where we are today. They thought they could get away with it. So many people say that they refuse to buy this game on principle right now and I can't blame them. EA tried to pull a fast one on us, and thankfully, it failed spectacularly. You gotta be a fucking algebra major to figure this shit out. Out of everything, I have no idea we didn't get where I'm at. Epic. I have no idea where I'm at in progression. It's a damn shame because one of the big things I asked for and didn't even think EA would give a shit about is a single player campaign mode. Well, here we get it. And not only that, it's all canon. And even cooler, it was marketed to be from the perspective of the Empire! Holy shit! Fuck yes! Let's do this! What the fuck? But But What what what? You just ended. No, you don't. You don't do that. That's d no. My worst fears <laughs> come true. <laughs> The game, if played on normal difficulty, is only four hours! <laughs> I wanted to avoid major spoilers here, guys, but I just have to warn you about this one particular part, okay? After practically two missions as the glorious Empire, which I was enjoying so much. Oh. Fuck you, rebel scum, die! Murder, meme, kill! <laughs> yes! You then somehow realize that the Empire is bad. And this is the first time, Aiden, that you're seeing this kind of stuff. Really, girl? girl you are ignorant if this is the first time you're seeing the Empire oppress people. Special forces, my ass. And you switch over to the rebel scum! What the fuck? Mission fucking three, I'm the fucking rebels? Oh man... The game then just becomes a pretty much standard ass affair with, with just rather ridiculous lump jumps in logic! Logic! To fit this, this Iden character 
everywhere across the Star Wars universe. Which, hey, is amazing for this actress, si since this is canon. But seriously, she, she like saves every major Star Wars character. B -b -b barely has any character herself. She's like hardcore Empire Special Forces in one mission. And then, and then literally, she is Leia's personal rebel bodyguard the next. Bull fucking shit! Huh? The Empire's time has come. One hour later. Unlimited power! A few moments later. Those ships are headed straight for feed. They're gonna attack the city. Everyone get to feed as quickly as you can. We may have the means to stop it. What? What the fuck is she doing on the fucking fucking X-Wing? Like half a second from the meeting her. Twelve seconds later. People like you, the reason hope can prevail. After you murdered hope. All of our families. That's the reason we're going to win. And friends. Welcome to the new You world. are a stupid person. Thank and you. And I will shake hands with you now. Because you are stupid. Five minutes later. Senator Organa. It's been a while. Building a republic is busy work. <laughs> so is chasing after an imperial fleet. Oh. I need a favor. <laughs> One of our generals has gone. <laughs> you know. I tracked him to talk about You know how it is. Killing Imperials, killing my former friends. You know, just another day. Another day, another dollar, right, Leia? <laughs> Meanwhile. This is just stupid. Her her about face is so stupid. You know, Dell has a better convincing turn to the light when he comes across Luke Skywalker and, and is surprised by his personality being different from everything he's been told. It's just incredibly disappointing as now these people can say that they've always done the Empire thing and, and we may never see this Empire perspective done justice for decades more, if ever. Thanks, EA, DICE, Disney, whoever. Oh, I am really disappointed in you, soldiers. You were supposed to be the Emperor's elite and you let a bunch of bears fucking destroy the Death Star! You're lucky I am not your commanding officer. I would murder you all. Look at this shit. It's embarrassing. So in this incredibly short campaign, we get some pretty uninspired objectives and repetitive missions, uh, along with some really jerky saber gameplay. Just one enemy type, damn it. No bot, no like big bug. Big mama bug. This, I don't know. There's a lot of clipping going on. So this, this is not working. This is just too much. You know, you you make the enemies a little bit bigger, then then this would work. But with the characters kind of having janky animations that clip into each other, it's just not as convincing as it, as it can be. There were times when I was really legit getting immersed, and you will too. Stay on us. Woo! Yeah. Oh shit! Bleep, 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 bleep. You fucker! I have you now. <laughs> this. This is a really inspired level. Like, this is like nothing like the other parts of this game. <laughs> the final battle of Jakku, where we actually get to participate in this massive battle with both ground and air segments and, and switching between each and, and never cutting away, but doing it all. Whoa! That was a lot of fun. That was fun. Just don't expect your AI buddies to help you, like at all. 
In fact, my favorite character at one point, he, he just had enough and he just fucking left the game. You just gonna wander off? You're the one wandering off into a fucking area you can't go to! Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is Shiv doing? And this is how Shiv died. Poor Shiv. Shiv! Shiv! Shiv, you're going the wrong way! Uh, we, we can't reach you! And that was the last anyone ever saw of Shiv. That's why you've never heard of him. <laughs> He literally walked home. Now granted, Shiv's planet is not this planet. It is a different planet in the galaxy. But Shiv found a way to walk home that day. True story. The campaign overall, it's a mixed bag. It's slightly disappointing. But look, it has its moments. And I am happy that they at least tried. Now hire a real story writer, get some better level designers and objective designers rather, and, and we can fix this for Battlefront 3. Easy! Make sure you come back. Because I love you. Make sure I have a ship to come back to. Hey Shrif, I hope you survive this incredibly dangerous mission as well. Thank you, Daryl. Your friendship <laughs> means everything to me. <laughs> the additional modes include uh, uh, here a pretty pointless single tutorial mission that doesn't teach you anything other than you have three abilities with star cards. Uh, a custom arcade mode that lets you set parameters for your own battles, but puts far too many restrictions on things that you actually care about. Uh, no adding additional AI bots like I've always wanted and asked for. No cross-era army battles here. You're limited to two sides. You, you can't even put certain armies on certain maps. <laughs> no wonder there's no private servers here. It's a joke. That's a joke. No. Okay? They had potential. In previous battlefronts, we've gotten fun little distractions as interesting units go up against other ones like Ewoks versus Scout Troopers, Tusken Raiders versus whoever, stuff like that. But no, instead, here it's an excuse to put the same old hero units up against the same old waves of enemies, okay? Kill 50 units and win. Kill 50 of their units in 10 minutes and win. Kill 50 of their units before they kill 50 of your units and win. Boring, uninspired, and half-assed. Okay? Putting unique units or unique sections of maps that we haven't seen before would have helped out here. It's just really low effort, not worth playing. But hey, doing all that busy work and, and three-starring everything will get you a bearded hand solo. Yay! Don't bother. As for the multiplayer side of things, this is where Battlefront is where it's at, right? Five modes total. Only three of those five are consistent fun. The other two, Blast, is your basic Call of Duty standard team deathmatch mode. The spawns are ridiculous and it's just not any fun, okay? And Strike sounds great with two teams of eight players, objective-based scenarios, but for some reason it just doesn't work out as great as you expect, probably with the spawns. But luckily the spawns are okay everywhere else. Heroes and Villains returns, and it's now narrated by this weird announcer thing. You got four on four hero arena battles, and they're pretty fun. There's definitely some advantages to certain heroes, clearly over certain others. But when, when it works out among a team, it evens out a bit better. The mode isn't perfect by any means, and I would get a lot of the same maps over and over, but it is certainly tense fun. 
you absolutely have to stay together and, uh, you know, and though it does devolve into button mashing pretty quickly amongst the Saber users, it is worth checking out. <laughs> Saber combat is a fucking mess. There... <laughs> There needs to be something done about saber combat and actual blocking and, and you know, high, low, side hits. Can't believe they still haven't fucking put any time and effort into fucking actual blocking like all the other freaking Jedi games that have come out over the past decade. Maybe I was wrong about this mode. It's the, it's the exact same type of saber combat from the first one, and I already pointed out how that was ridiculous. That's basically what we're doing. That's the saber combat in Star Wars Battlefront. We would like to reenact the saber combat. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's because you're old, man. <laughs> you. Victory! However, this game is basically just, let's boil it down. It's two really great multiplayer modes, okay? That's what you're getting for 60 bucks. Galactic Assault and the surprising Starfighter Assault. Now, in my opinion, uh, the, one of the greatest additions is the new classes system, okay? But it's a start, it's an improvement. But unfortunately, it's not there yet because there's not much reason to cooperate when dropped in with a few random other people. The incentive to stay together and earn more battle points, it's ultimately ignored and everybody just runs off in their own directions, ignoring teamwork. And it's probably because, you know, battle points and rather how well you do in the match ultimately means jack shit. I win. Number one in everything. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, Del. It was. How many credits did you earn? Uh, 350. <laughs> I earned 330. So you get 20 more credits than me. I wonder if you're getting that 20 more credits because you're so much of a better of a player. Look, you're at the top. 49 eliminations. Oh I have my God. 10. I'm at the bottom. Dell's at the top. I'm at the bottom. What a better way to show off how much it matters whether you're good or not at the game. Points. This game is fucking Fisher Price. What did he? What did he? Triple my score? Oh, yeah. And he only got what? 20 more credits? Might as well have not gotten any more credits. We had the same amount of credits. <laughs> wow. The only reason to do well is to grab the heroes and the vehicles and those unique units first, okay? If you aren't among the top tier players, then you can expect to pretty much never play these guys getting relegated to just the unique guys, you know, like the awful flamethrower or the slightly better jump troopers. Uh, it's just, it's a nightmare balancing heroes, for sure. And I don't envy DICE's job here, but perhaps, you know, having to continue to get kills or lose the hero over time would help or, or include modes that actually give the heroes to players that are underperforming. Uh, or maybe give out random hero chances across the whole board to a side will help. It's, it's just, it's tough, I understand. Um, it's also a big disappointment that we still have limp vehicles. For whatever reason, DICE is just refuses to give us multiple person vehicles and anti-vehicle play, meaningful play, right? You, you can hop into a clone trooper harrier, right? But only as a static turret where the plane just disappointingly flies itself like a moron. Causing damage, or do you only damage those with the ion? Yeah, I mean, that's just uh, fucking pointless. I hate that that thing is on rails and you just sit there in the fucking gun turret. Like, with a good pilot, we could do some damage. We can go crazy on these fools. But now I gotta sit here with this fucking brain dead, fucking ass pilot, not reacting to him getting hit. Thankfully, maps are so impressive. They're pretty good. There's a few crappy ones like the initial Hoth push, that first phase. But for the most part, I really enjoyed all the maps. There's no doubt that, that the game is just absolutely beautiful. Oh my god, this looks beautiful, Joe. <laughs> I like the leaves. Oh look my nice. look god. Look at the leaves. Look at the. That looks good! 
Yo, that look good. Are those spiders? Where? Okay, no, oh shit, man! They just scare the me, man! All that? these fucking spiders! <laughs> fuck! That look good. Look at these fucking leaves, Joe. Where are they coming from? That's a lot of fucking leaves. It look like ants, but it still looks good. From, There's too many leaves. There's too many leaves. Joe, too many stop leaves. trying to fucking ruin this for me. <laughs> the graphics. 10 out of 10. They're as good as ever. Uh, the visual spectacle is something that few other first-person shooters can compare to right now. If, if none. This is especially apparent in the Starfighter Assault mode, which surprisingly turned out to be one of my favorite modes. This is blowing my mind, guys. The best part of the game isn't even developed by DICE. <laughs> fuck is that? Victory! Even the capital ships are getting in on the action. That is reminding me of Free Space 2. That's fucking cool. Damn, man. Oh, it's fucking, I love Starfighter battles. What the fuck is this, man? What the fuck? Oh, that MVP. Damn, beard. Criterion takes over development duties from DICE here. Maybe that's why on this mode. And although there's been no radical control scheme changes, we're not gonna see joysticks, I guess, anytime soon since nobody uses them. It, it just manages to play and feel superior to Battlefront 1, thankfully. Perhaps the more wide open areas or the fantastic background vistas and the objectives really help immerse you in that Star Wars lore. I love that there's that first person cockpit view for each of these great iconic vehicles still. It's pretty much the closest we're ever going to come to another Rogue Squadron or X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter these days, and I really enjoyed it. I am much better at this mode than any other mode in the game. I'm like an ace pilot, and I know exactly why I loved it so much, and it's interesting. You want to know why I think I like the Starfighter much? There's many, many reasons. That guy's on me. He's on me. It's because there's bots in here. There's bots. So you're getting some kills, you're feeling good about yourself. Then when you run into a player, it turns into this intense one-on-one, -on -one, let's fucking do this. And sometimes it devolves into just turning left, you know, forever. But, you know, I think the bots really help the game. And uh, that's what we got on the ground battles in the original Battlefront. As far as I'm aware, I don't see those bots on the ground in this one. Let's get in there, Red it, it does help to, uh, you know, the sense scale of the game for sure. Yeah. See, you know, another, see, uh, uh, another thing that the bots do is it contributes to distracting enemy players so that they're not constantly being targeted every fucking second. Yeah, you have a little bit of time to sort of gain your bearings, and then get into a real fight. Woo! This just feels good. This is what bots do. Why have they not put bots on the ground? Is it because they just, they were, they just don't want to look like they're copying Pandemic? Is, is it all that pride? Unfortunately, they don't combine the Starfighter Assault Mode with the Galactic Assault Mode as they did more than 12 years ago. Still don't get that here. So, that's a major disappointment and something we'll have to wait for. You know, capital ship to capital ship engagements. Let's see, uh, don't you think they should have put in a lot more Clone Wars content? Heroes, locations, battles, than what's already in the game? I wanted to play Mace Windu, Dooku, the Clone Commanders. I know, right? I don't understand how a game 12 years old can have more content in it with regards to that than, than, than this game in 2017. Well, that, that's really about it. As for the other tabs in the menu, nothing reaches the epic legendary level of the diorama mode, which is now completely gone. And, you know, honestly, without it, I was tempted to give this game a 1 out of 10 uh, because it was the single best mode of all time. But alas, it will forever remain in the annals of EA Battlefront history. So Moment of silence for the diorama mode. Dollar, no, seventy dollars. Oh. Play thirty matches and get the one. Oh. This is, this diorama mode is actually worse than Godzilla. 
I, I can't believe this. Uh, wait, are you fucking serious? Is this, is this fucking for real? That, that's it? Are you guys seeing this? What the fuck is this? they do put in some collectibles <laughs> though if you thought the pathetic call of duty collectibles were awful and lazy just wait till you see these puppies okay i didn't expect to be able to you know grab collectibles and pick up lots of little different weapons though i should have i don't know i guess i was expecting bare fucking minimum so Slightly above, bare minimum right now. And then you come over to here to check them and there's no fucking collectibles! And even bother with them! It's, the collectible is literally what you see there, progress one out of two. Collectibles in this game are fucking crafting parts. Pathetic crafting parts. Crafting parts, crafting parts, crafting parts, crafting parts. So that you can up it in a fucking loot box! So the collectibles are loot boxes. I don't know how you managed to do that. But you managed to do that. And I want to punch you in the throat. And gotta mention this, somehow individual soldier appearance customization has somehow gotten worse from Battlefront. Okay, Battlefront 1, which was pretty bad, but it's worse here. It makes no sense as Star Wars is one of the richest universes to mine for this kind of stuff, right? In this way, it sometimes makes Battlefront 2 feel as empty beyond its two good modes as Battlefront 1 was. Oh my gosh, Battlefront. You, you, you take some steps forward and then you literally walked off a cliff. I think, I think that's the best way to put it. You took, you took some steps forward and then you took a step off the side of the cliff and you, you fell and you was You know Homer when he falls all in the fucking cliff That's what happened here The final verdict for Star Wars Battlefront 2 is incredibly difficult and it's depressing Okay, DICE did make some improvements, okay? A four hour campaign is still longer than a zero hour campaign. And, and there are lots of new things here and there and the classes and things. So I have to go with a six out of 10. It is slightly above average. And notice the same verdict as Battlefront 1. But how is that possible if it's made improvements? It is because it's being held back by so many of the insulting business practices that are injected into this game. The digital deluxe pay to win version. The fucking microtransactions and loot boxes in inseparably tied to progression and the lack of customization here and sort of the a little bit of, of I refuse to, to make our game like that game just admit that that game had the solution right and you can do that game way better okay you can do it better than pandemic just do it do it why is it dice that the two most popular modes are the ones that most resemble the 2005 game all right Pull your head out of your ass and get your ego out of the way and realize what people want. Give them what they want. Bigger galactic battles and st starship battles and cross those over and you're set. Oh, and of course, completely reworking that progression in the microtransactions, okay? We might eventually see if they do all that, what Battlefront is finally, you know, about, supposed to be about, okay? Now, whether EA is even capable of giving us that remains to be seen. All I know is that if Battlefront 3 comes out exactly the same way, with this same progression system and loot boxes the way they are here, I may actually organize or join whatever boycott is already sure to have appeared, okay? So please, EA, please, DICE, continue to listen to our feedback. It's tough love. We love you and it's tough, okay? Except for EA. I'm talking about DICE. 
If you implement all this for the next game, I swear, I'll buy two copies. I'll maybe even buy three. Make a fucking great game first, then turn it into a platform where players will come back month after month, and maybe they'd be willing to drop a few more dollars into it as time goes on. Not the other way around, all right? Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. I'm gonna send a letter right now, okay? Point by point, what'll work. <laughs> what is this? Get out of here, you're ruining the party, you idiot! Uh, <laughs> really? That idiot thinks I'm gonna... Oh, this is gonna be rich! What do we got here? Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, is that what you think? <laughs> Doesn't this idiot know the children love to gamble? <laughs> Hit it, boys! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! EA! Yeah. It's in the game! <laughs> uh, behind some bagels and some loot boxes! Gamble! Alright, we're gonna walk into the frame. Out of frame.